How you can make the word of God flesh to you. Christmas is the celebration of the birth of God, of heaven, on earth as a man. Now to say that is to say a lot. Because how can God be born? And we're going to deal with the how later. But we are talking about the fact also that indeed when it comes to the exact date of the birth of Jesus, nobody knows for sure. However, we know that this is the season of his birth. We also know that indeed he was born. Hello. Amen. And so we can take any season if you so choose, but this is the season that theologians and uh, historical uh, uh, evidence or data points that he was born in this season. And so we are talking about Christmas as being the celebration of the birth of of the God of heaven on earth as a man. Now, we know that when he was born on earth as a man, he was referred to as the son of the highest or the son of God. We understand that. But I, I, there is a reason why the Holy Ghost gave me de this definition because I've now read it from anywhere he just dropped this definition in my spirit. And even when I wanted to say the Son of God, God is what he gave me. And because he wanted us to know that indeed, that when we celebrate Christmas, we're really celebrating the birth of God on earth as a man. Even though we accept that we are talking about the Son of God. But this Son of God is God. Praise the Lord. So we discussed that. We also then talked about why. Why was it necessary for the God of heaven to be born on earth as a man? We said the reason was because of the sin that occurred in the Garden of Eden when Adam and Eve sinned and by their sin poisoned the well, contaminated the well, of the seed in Adam in such a way that from then on, instead of Adam being the son of God, he became the son of the devil. Hello. Uh, the Bible says that Adam was the son of God. That's what the Bible says. But this son of God, before he will procreate, he became the son of the devil. Why do we say that? Because God told him that the very day that he ate from the tree of the knowledge of the good and evil, that will be the day that he will surely die. And you and I know that indeed, Adam, after eating of that fruit from the tree, he lived over 900 years more. And so obviously, there is a difference between dying and surely dying. Hello. Because we will have thought that if God said the day that you eat from this tree, you will surely die. He ate it. Not only did he live, he lived enough to have children. Remember Abel and Cain and all the other children that came along. And so obviously in thinking about it, he did not die immediately. So there was a surely dying or a surely death and die and 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 death that i call it the two types of death spiritual death and physical death and uh, the bible says this in romans chapter 6 verse 23 that the wages of sin is what death but the gift of god is what eternal life in christ jesus so therefore when adam sinned the wages of that sin was death but it was a sin that produced the death. The sin is what spiritual death is. 
that death is the physical death. You got me? Yeah. And so there is a difference. So when God said you will surely die, he was meaning that it may, he meant that he will spiritually die. And spiritual death is of the nature of the devil. And so when Adam died spiritually, he became the son of the devil instead of the son of God that he was before. Hello? Amen. Now, so now from here on, Adam passed on his genes of spiritual death upon every man that was born. And in the book of Romans chapter 5, beginning from verse 17, Romans 5, 17, it says this, Romans, for if by one man's offense, death reigned. You see that? By one, much more they which receive abundance of grace and of the gift of righteousness shall reign in life by one Jesus Christ. And so one man's offense, who was that one man? Adam, death reigned. Everybody that was born died. Hello? And the Bible says it is appointed unto man once to die, and then what? The judgment. And everybody dies, and the death came about because of Adam's sin. So it says, for one man's offense, death reigned by one, much more they which receive abundance of grace and of the gift of righteousness shall reign in life by one Jesus Christ. Go to verse 19 of the same chapter. Verse 19 of the same chapter. It says, for by one man's disobedience, many were made. Now I want you to take note of that. Many were made. Say that with me. Many were made sinners. Say that with me. Many were made sinners. So by one man so disobedience, many were made sinners. So by the obedience of one shall many be made what? Righteous. So there is the making of sinners and there is the making of righteousness. Did you get it? There is a making of sinners and there is a making of righteousness. Everybody that was born after Adam was made a sinner because of Adam's disobedience. And everyone else that will receive Jesus Christ as their Lord and Savior will be made righteous. Because some people will say, man, I didn't do anything. Uh, I wasn't in the garden when Adam sinned. Why should I be made a sinner? And there is a scriptural information tucked in in the book of Hebrews chapter 7. I think I shared briefly that with you. Where it said that Levi was in Abraham when Abraham paid tithes to Melchizedek. The point that was being made was that the, the order of Melchizedek, the priesthood of Melchizedek, is greater than the priesthood of, of, the, of the Levites. In the sense that if Levi, if Levi himself, who was from whom all the, the, the priesthood in, in, the, in Israel came from, if he was in Abraham, paying tithes to Melchizedek, even though he wasn't born yet. Did you get me here? Even though he wasn't born yet, but he was in Abraham's loins, as the Bible says. And so, therefore, Levi paid tithes to Melchizedek. In the same way, all of us were in Adam's loins. And so when Adam sinned, all of us were made sinners. Are you with me? Do you understand this? Okay. I'm trying to make it as simple as we can so that we can get to uh, the how. And so why is that? And so now the Bible tells us in the book of Revelation chapter 13 and verse 8, it tells us that in heaven a decision was made that indeed the Lamb of God will be slain from the foundation of this world so that in so doing you and I can have the benefit of his blood. He says, and all that dwell upon the earth shall worship him, whose names are not written in the book of life, of the lamb slain from the foundation of the world. Which is to say that before even God created Adam, he had already made arrangement, pre-planned, predestined, pre-arranged, pre-ordained that man will be redeemed. Praise the Lord. That's how much he loves us. 
And I said to you last week, there's a difference between us sinning and the angels sinning. The Bible tells that the moment that iniquity was found in Lucifer, who became the devil, hello, he was cast out of heaven. And I show you in the book of uh, Isaiah where he claimed to, that he wanted to be uh, the, the throne of God. And he wanted to be like God. And God said, no, because I didn't make you like me. So you cannot be like me. If, and for us, on the other hand, we were made like God. And so we are much more important to him than angels are. Are you getting me here? Uh, and therefore, in so doing, he even, before he created the world, made an arrangement for the Lamb of God to be slain from the foundation of this world. This is why, if you go to the book of John, chapter 1, verse 29, this is what it says there, John chapter 1, verse 29. It says, the next day John seeth Jesus coming unto him, and say, Behold, the Lamb of God, which taken away the sin of the world. What was said and agreed upon before the world was created, as we read in Revelation 13, 8, came to pass when John the Baptist, seeing Jesus, declared, Behold, the Lamb of God, which taken away the sin of the world. So why was Jesus uh, uh, born, or why did God uh, of heaven uh, allow himself to be born as a man in this world. Why? To take away the sin of the world. Well, praise the Lord. Amen. Now, so we know the why. Now, let's go on to talk about the how. How was this done? And it's important that to understand the how, you have to understand something. I, I, I want uh, uh, Brother Garcia and uh, Brother... Uh, Gary to come here. You stand across from each other. All right. And uh, I'm, I'm going to get Emmanuel to come in the middle. Uh, he has really dressed up like Christmas. <laughs> yeah. And so, uh, in the light of the world, he says, praise the Lord. Now, this is what I want you to, to see here. Uh, uh, see this as the spiritual realm here, right? I, I want you to follow along with me here and see Gary as the physical or the natural realm, all right? I'm talking about a how. I want to show you how, the how. Now, if you recall, the Bible tells us in Luke chapter 1 that uh, the angel Gabriel was sent uh, to go and announce to Mary that she was going to be with a child, right? And that indeed the child when is born will be named Jesus, the son of the highest, right? And she asked him the question, how can this possibly be? Uh, because I know not a man. Because throughout history and even today, the way you bring a person into being is through sexual intercourse, right? And so without a man, you cannot have that to happen. Even if they have uh, uh, in vitro fertilization, they still need the sperm of the man. Hello? So now, it is being said here, as Mary said to the angel, how can I possibly have a baby when I don't have a man? I know not a man. And he said to her, that the, the, that the Holy Ghost himself will, will overshadow her, right? And, and then she will conceive, and that thing will be called what? The Son of God. And so obviously then, God can take uh, his own system or method of making something happen when it is not biologically, naturally possible for it to be. You get me here? Because all through life, we have concentrated on the natural. On the natural, you can have children through sexual intercourse. Now, God is saying to, uh, through Gabriel to Mary, you're going to have a child without having sexual intercourse. And that you're going to have, you're going to conceive, and this conception will come about without man. 
So God has to find a way to get what is in the spirit to come into the physical. You follow this? That's Christmas story. How is it that we're going to go from here to there? Because always we have only had this to procreate. How are we going to get procreation without the help of a man? So then, this is what the message begins here. Go to Luke chapter 1, verse 35. Let's start from there. Luke chapter 1, verse 35. And it says in that verse that, And the angel of, uh, answered and said unto her, The Holy Ghost shall come upon thee, and the power of the highest shall overshadow thee. Therefore also that holy one, the holy thing, which shall be born of thee, shall be called, what? The Son of God. Next verse. And behold, thy cousin Elizabeth, she hath also conceived a son in her old age. She did this physically, naturally, biologically. Elizabeth, okay. The only uh, difference with Elizabeth is that she had gotten older and therefore she didn't think she could have, uh, she could conceive and have a baby, but she did anyway because the angel told her that it will happen. And so it says here that and this is the sixth month with her who was called barren. Next verse. And it says, for with God, nothing is impossible. You see, for us in this world, we see anything that is possible to only be in the natural physical realm. If we have to go to this realm, which most people in the world don't even know, that's a spiritual realm. They have no concept of the spiritual realm. And, and let me put that to you. Go to 1 Corinthians chapter 2, and let's look at verse 14. 1 Corinthians chapter 2, verse 14. And look at this. It says, But the natural man receives not the things of the Spirit of God. Who is the natural man? The man who is not born again. The man who only sees things and believes them, and nothing else can he believe if he doesn't see it. Amen. That's a natural man. Amen. Do you get me here? It says, for the natural man receives not the things of the Spirit of God, for they are what? Foolishness unto him. You talk to him about, or her about natural things, uh, the spiritual things, they think it's foolishness. Why? Because they cannot measure it, they cannot validate it with the kind of scientific knowledge that they have, and so they say it's what? Foolishness. Then he says, neither can he know them. Forget about him calling it foolishness. He cannot know them because they are what? Spiritually discerned. And so if it does not happen biologically, physically, naturally, materially, there's no way that they can accept that what you are saying is a reality. You follow? And so and this is, in this case, Elizabeth, her birth was a natural biological one similar to Sarah's, Okay. Now let's move on. Let's go back to first uh, to uh, Luke chapter one, and we were at verse thirty-six, I believe, uh, uh, thirty-seven. Okay, let's move on. We go to the next verse. It says, "But with God, nothing shall be what impossible." Next verse, and it says, "And Mary said, this is the key. How do you get from get, uh, from Raja?" to Gary. How do you get from the spiritual to the natural? It says, Behold the handmaid of the Lord. Be it unto me according to thy word. It says, Be it unto me according to thy word. And so the moment the word of God was spoken through the angel Gabriel, the answer, the response that Mary gave said, be it unto me according, let it happen, let it be so as you said. Now that's what faith is. Faith is a positive response to what God has promised, what God has said. That's simple. And so to get from the spiritual to the natural, you need the word of God. You need Emmanuel to take what is here to transfer it to over here. You follow this? 
Now, and so we as Christians, we as believers, we depend upon the word of God. And, and that's another thing, before I even go there, let me say this. Everything started in the spiritual realm. Would you agree? Yeah. Because the Bible says God is a spirit. And if God is a spirit and he created natural, physical, material things, right? Then it means that natural, physical, material things came out of the spirit. Would you agree? Because this preceded that. This came first. This is the mother of the physical realm. This is a root and that is a fruit, right? And so if you get anything here, then it takes the word to transfer it. Jesus said this at one point in John 6, 63. It says, the words that I speak unto you, they are spirit and they are life. And so Jesus was using words as containers to take what is in the spirit and bring it into the natural. Oh, my God. Do you follow this? Oh, praise the Lord. He was taking, he was using, and so basically words are containers. Your word is a container of that which you want to express. I, I was reading uh, uh, the definition of logos in, in, uh, in, in Greek. And it says simply in Greek that logos is the expression of thought. I said, wow, that's awesome. Logos is the expression of thought. What you have thought of, you need words to contain that thought and to bring that thought out. Hello? And so if you want to know what you are thinking, it will come by what you are saying. Did you get it? That's what the Bible says, out of the abundance of the heart, the, the mouth what? Speaketh. And so what is happening here is that we have the angel Gabriel come and announce to Mary with words from the spirit, but for, for, for the words in the spirit to happen in the natural, it would take Gary to receive it. Unless he receives the words that had come from the Spirit, what the words of the Spirit had been declared unto him would not happen. Amen. Do you know the Bible says it is the will of God for all men to be saved? Amen. In First Timothy chapter 2 verse 4, it says it is the will of God for all men to be saved. And yet, not all men are being saved. You know why? Because the Bible says also in Romans chapter 10, verse 13, it says that, that whosoever will call upon the name of the Lord shall be what? Saved. And so if you call upon the name of the Lord, you'll be saved. If you don't call upon the name of the Lord, even though the Lord wants you saved, you're not going to be saved. And so the point is, is that how God brought about this Christmas story is to reveal to us, his ammo, how he operates. There was a time in heaven that he, by the counsel of his own will, his thought, wanted to create or to make a man in his own image. He wanted a creature that will walk in this universe that is a creature of his liking, or of his likeness, I should say, a creature of his image. He wanted that. And so that was a thought. Now, sometimes they would tell a child, before you were born, you were a thought. And that is true. If there had not been a thought, well, let's leave it there. Now, you know, because nowadays, a thought is not a thought like we thought. <laughs> there is a thought of something that is spelled differently. And so I don't even know anymore. But anyway, <laughs> one thing we know is this, that you can say before a child was born, the child was a thought. The parents made a decision that they're going to do something. And they did it, and voila, the child was born. And so God had a thought. 
And his thought was that he wanted to have creatures that will walk in this universe who will have his image and his likeness. Amen. And so how does he get his thought out? He used words as containers of his thought. And in Genesis chapter 1 verse 3, the Bible says, And God said, right? And let there be light, and there was what? Light. And so what I'm saying to you is this, that if you want to take a thought and bring it, because, because we don't know, as you're sitting here, I don't know what you're thinking. You're probably thinking, oh, pastor, finish it so we can go home and, and, and uh, <laughs> who knows what you're thinking? I don't know. But until you open your mouth to say what you're thinking, that thought is hidden. I get him here. The only way we know what is hidden is if, in fact, it is exposed. And words are the, the containers that expose the thoughts of man that are hidden. And so if you don't want to know what some people say, that, uh, that if you don't want to know, uh, if, you, if you don't want people to know what you're thinking, then open your mouth. <laughs> the moment you open your mouth, you tell them what you're thinking. Right? And so God has opened his mouth with this Bible. And so we know what he's thinking. And he told us the thoughts that he has of us. Oh, God. Look at Jeremiah 29, verse 11. Look at what God said about the thoughts that he has of us. Jeremiah 29, verse 11. He says, the thoughts that I have, for I know the thoughts that I think toward you. Oh, glory be to God. Say the Lord. Thoughts of peace. Yes. That's why when the angel came and declared that Jesus had been born, he says, peace on earth and goodwill toward all men. He yes. says hey, that, that the Lord, he says, I know the thoughts that I think toward you, say the Lord. Thoughts of peace and not of evil. To give you an expected end. Yes. Praise the Lord. Yes. I said praise the Lord. And so God has used words to express his thoughts toward us. And so, and then when God opens his mouth and speaks, it is as good as done. Hello? Because he will not say it if he didn't mean it. If he meant it, he will say it. And if he says it, it is done. Let me put this to you. In Numbers chapter 23, verse 19. Numbers 23, verse 19. Numbers 23, verse 19. It says this. God is not a man that he should lie. That means that all men lie. <laughs> and women too. <laughs> Hello. <laughs> it's another the son of man that he should repent Hath he said it, and shall he not what? Do it. Or hath he spoken, and shall he not make it what? Good. And so as far as God is concerned, when he speaks it, you can take it to the bank. Oh, praise the Lord. Now, hallelujah, praise the Lord. And so now that God wanted Jesus to be born, the Son of God to be born, he had to find someone that would take his word and respond to it affirmatively, respond to it positively. Hello? And that one was Mary. Mary said, be it unto me, even according to thy word. And the moment he said it, she said it, the angel Gabriel departed. It's interesting if we had had time to read the previous verses, it will show that, that, that when he approached uh, Zacharias, who was Elizabeth's husband, who was uh, serving in the temple at the time, he said to, to, to uh, Zacharias that he had come for, to respond to the prayers that he and his wife had been praying for a son. And, and, and Zacharias began to talk the talk that we usually talk sometimes, because we are looking at how impossible it is. 
He's looking at his old age. He's looking at his wife's old age. Rather than accepting that, in fact, if God said it through the angel, so be it. And it's interesting that in order for John the Baptist to be born, his father had to be struck dumb. Why? Because otherwise he could have used his words to prevent the manifestation of what's in the spirit into the natural. That's how important words are. In fact, you will like this one. The Bible says that in heaven there are three that bear record, the Father, the Word, and the Holy Spirit. But when the time came, it wasn't the Father that manifested. It wasn't the Holy Spirit that manifested. It was the Word that manifested. Are you listening to me here? How do we know this? Go to John chapter 1, verse 1. John chapter 1, verse 1. It says, in the beginning was a word, right? And the word was with God, and the word was God. Next verse. The same was in the beginning with God. If, 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 you cannot be with God and be alone. You cannot be with. You, you got, there got to be more than one. The problem people have is, is uh, how can we talk about God being one when God has represented himself in three ways, the Father, the Word, and the Holy Spirit. But it says that the same was in the beginning with. And so whatever the Word was and is, is different from the God that was with him in the beginning. Right? Amen. Next verse. All things were made by him, made by the Word. All things were made by him, by the word. And without him, the word was not anything made that was made. Next verse. In him, in the word, was life. That's what we call our church, the word of life. Oh, glory be to God. You go to a good church. Hello. In him, in the word, was life. And the life was the light of men. And the light of men is not the light that we see here. I wish I had time to get into it, but another day. Next verse. And the light shineth in darkness, and darkness comprehended it not. Next verse. There was a man sent from God whose name was John. Now, listen to this. If there was a man sent from God whose name was John, this John had to be born. If he was sent from God, he had to be born. And that's why Zacharias had to be struck down so he does not stop what God has sent to manifest. Let's move on. Next verse. It says, the same became for a witness, to bear witness of the light, that all men through him might believe. Next verse. He was not that light, but was sent to bear witness of that light. I wish I had time to spend on all of that, but uh, I'm going to go on. The Bible says that this was Elijah that will come. Let's move on. For Next verse. That was the true light which lighted every man that cometh into the world. Whatever this light is, it lighted upon every man that comes into the world. So he was in the world, and the world was made by him, by the word, and the world knew him not. The world knew not the word. If you go now and you talk to people and you ask them about, about the things of the Bible, they will not know it. They don't read the Bible. They're not born again. In fact, if you're not born again and you read the Bible, you will not really understand it. It takes the Holy Spirit to assist you to understand the Bible. Next verse. Next verse. He came unto his own, and his own received it not. The word came unto his own, and his own, the world, received him not. Next verse. But as many as received him. You see that? As many as received him, him whom? The word. That's what Mary did. She received the word. It's a be it unto me according to that word. But as many as received him, to them gave he power to become the sons of God. Even to them that believe on his name. Okay? Uh, I'll get back to that in a minute. Let's go to verse 13. 
which were born not of blood. Not by the way Zechariah and Elizabeth had John, who were born not of blood, not of the will of the flesh. You see that? Not of the will of the flesh, nor of the will of man, but what? Of God. And so if it's of God, it has to be of the spirit because God is a spirit. And so you're going to have a birth that will occur from the spirit. And so when you get born again, you're getting born again from the spirit. Look at what God, uh, Jesus told Nicodemus. Hold on to this. We'll come back to it. Quickly go to John chapter 3. Quickly. And, and, and uh, quickly, verse 1. John 3, 1. Quickly. He said, there was a man of the Pharisees named Nicodemus, a ruler of the Jews. Next verse. The same came to Jesus by night and said unto him, Rabbi, we know that thou art a teacher come from God, for no man can do these miracles that thou doest except God be with him. Next verse. Listen to what Jesus said. Jesus answered and said unto him, Verily, verily, I say unto thee, except a man be born again, he cannot see the kingdom of God. He cannot see how God operates. He cannot see how God works. He cannot understand it. Unless, except a man be born again. And listen to the question that Nicodemus posed to Jesus when he heard this. Next verse. He said unto him, how can a man be born when he's old? Just like Gabriel told Mary, nothing is impossible with God. How can a man be born when he's old? Can he enter the second time into his mother's womb? And be born because all of us came out of the womb. The only way to get here. The only way to get here on earth is through the womb. Hello? Hello? That is why the Bible refers to the devil as a thief and a robber. Why? Because he had come here not through the means by which all of us get here. Even God, say God, God. even God when he wanted to come to this earth that he created for man had to come through the womb. That's why we are celebrating the birth of God of heaven on earth as a man. He came through the womb of Mary. Amen. Now, next verse. Jesus answered very last time to the except a man be born of water. And one thing that you have to understand is that many times the Bible uses water as, as word. Water as a symbol for the word word. <laughs> and of the spirit, it cannot enter into the kingdom of God. Unless you are born by the word of God. Uh, let me prove that to you. First uh, Peter chapter one verse twenty three. Quickly, First Peter one twenty three. First Peter one twenty. It's a being born again, not of corruptible seed, but of incorruptible. But by what? The word of God, which liveth and abideth forever. So it is the word of God that gives birth to us. Did you get me here? And who is the word of God? Jesus. Are you getting me here? So there's and if Jesus. Is going to give you uh, the new life, you will be made that way. Just like you were made a sinner, you also will be made a righteous, holy person. And God does that if you receive his son Jesus, who is the word. You receive him just like Mary received the word from Gabriel. And so God says you are the heel of the Lord. So be it unto me according to that word. God says, you are blessed. So be it unto me, according to thy word. God says, his favor surrounds you like a shield. So be it unto me, according to thy word. Bible says to you that you have been redeemed from the curse. So say what? Be it unto me, according to thy word. He tells you are the head, not the tail. What do you say? Be it unto me, according to thy word. He says, no weapon formed against you shall ever prosper. What do you say? Be unto me according to thy word. He says, Give and it shall be given unto you. Good measure, press down, shaken together, running over, shall men give unto your bosom. What do you say? Be unto me according to thy word. Praise the Lord. That is the message of Christmas. Just receiving the word. That's what Mary did. And how is that done? How do you go from the spirit to the natural through the word? Did you get it? And so when we come to church, what do we want? What do we want? 
What do we want? The word. We don't want rituals. We don't want performances. We don't want human doctrine. We don't want secular humanism. We don't want philosophy. We don't want any of those. All we want is what? The Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. You may sit. God bless you. Give him a hand as you go back there. Praise the Lord. So then, basically, faith is our part. Receiving the word is our part. Giving the word is God's part. That's why God anoints humans like me with the anointing to be the vessel through whom he will give his word. Are you listening to me? And then when you come to church, your part, my part, is to hear from heaven and give the word of heaven to you. Your part is to come expecting every time you walk in here to hear the word from heaven. And then after you receive the word from heaven, you have to say like Mary said, be it unto me according to that word. So the what is impossible becomes possible. What used not to work will start working. What is hard becomes easier. Then you don't have to struggle in this life. You just have to trust what God says in his word that if he said it. And that is what we have done as a church from the very, very beginning. We have stood on this word of life, this word of God. That is what we have done. That's all we know. How else can you explain someone coming in and giving us three acres of land? Giving it to the church. How else can you explain it? There are churches all on Clarsy Highway. We didn't have to be the one for him to give it to. I mean, why would they call the church and ask us for the parking lot so they can do the, the auction? How is that? How is it that, that when we made the offer and gave them the money, that they returned the money? How is it that, that when Mr. Fred and I went to go and have the, uh, the closing done, the guy said, we will pay the taxes for all of this. How is that? How is that? That we have, uh, and, and, and it's 75,000 acre, uh, $75,000 per acre here. So you multiply it by three, that's how much money came in one day to this church. How is that? Because of the words that we speak. Because of the word of God. That's all we know. Amen. It's not so much. Everything has been miraculous Amen. with this ministry. Amen. Everything has been beyond anything that we can do naturally. It isn't what anyone does naturally to make it happen. It is all by God. And we give him the glory. <laughs> Praise the Lord. We give him the glory. We give him the glory. Amen. Oh Lord, we give you the glory.